Welcome back, Izizi Africa family. If you're passionate about African development, sovereignty, and leaders who take bold steps to change the game, you're in for a treat today. We have an exciting update on a project that could reshape the economy of Burkina Faso and perhaps even set a blueprint for other African nations. We're talking about President Ibrahim Traore and the massive tomato processing factory that is finally complete. Can you believe it? This project is a game changer. And in today's video, we're going to dive deep into what this means for the country and the region. Stick around because you won't want to miss the details. Now let's start with a question. Do you think it's possible for a single factory to revolutionize an entire nation's economy? Think about that for a moment, because this isn't just about tomatoes. It's about independence, empowerment, and reclaiming control of resources that have long benefited outsiders, rather than the people of Burkina Faso. Let's rewind a bit to when this monumental project was first announced. President Ibrahim Traore made it clear from the start that his administration wasn't just about political slogans, it was about delivering results. One of the core elements of his plan was developing Burkina Faso's agricultural sector, which engages 80 to 90 percent of the population. Agriculture is the backbone of the country's economy, contributing a substantial 30 to 40 percent to the GDP. So, the question arose. Why was so much of the country's agricultural potential especially tomatoes, going to waste. In 2021 alone, Burkina Faso produced a staggering 290,000 tons of tomatoes. But here's the kicker. Much of that was either exported to neighboring Ghana, or even worse, wasted, because the country lacked proper storage and processing facilities. Imagine farmers toiling away in the fields, only to watch their hard-earned crops rot away. Meanwhile, Burkina Faso had to import tomato puree from Europe. Does that sound like economic freedom to you? Clearly, something needed to change, and President Traor decided that Burkina Faso would take control of its resources. That's where this $8.1 million tomato processing facility comes in. Funded by the Agency for the Promotion of Community Entrepreneurship, APEC, this project isn't just about tomatoes, it's about people and progress. The plant has the capacity to process 5 tons of tomatoes per hour, and once operational, it will create 100 direct jobs and over 5,000 indirect jobs. Can you imagine the ripple effect this will have on the local economy? Thousands of families will benefit from a single project, lifting entire communities out of poverty. Before we continue, just a gentle reminder to like and share our videos. Also, Subscribe to the channel to stay informed on the latest African economic, political, and social developments, and explore how global geopolitics impact the continent. Now let's continue. The tomato processing plant is designed to be more than just a factory. It symbolizes economic freedom and sovereignty, two ideals that President Traore has made the cornerstone of his leadership. Burkina Faso no longer needs to rely on expensive, imported goods, when it can process its own tomatoes, ensuring better quality and more affordable prices for its citizens. Wouldn't you prefer locally produced goods that you can trust over overpriced imports? One of the most impressive aspects of this project is the speed with which it was completed. Construction started not long ago, but the government, under President Traore's leadership, showed a level of commitment and efficiency that is rarely seen in African infrastructure projects. Let's be honest here. How often do we hear of government projects being delayed, abandoned, or marred by corruption? Yet in Burkina Faso, Traore has set a new standard for accountability and delivery. This tomato factory is proof that when leaders are dedicated, focused, and unburdened by outside influences, they can achieve monumental things in a short period of time. Months ago, when the project was about halfway complete, the chief of staff to President Traore visited the site. He was impressed by the technicality of the construction and the progress made, even noting that the equipment had already been ordered, with shipments expected to arrive in a few weeks. It was clear that this wasn't just another abandoned government project. The team behind the construction was young, motivated, and committed to delivering results. But it doesn't stop there. The project is also supported by Sofado, 
a company that has opened tomato purchasing kiosks in regions like Kumbasiri. These kiosks help local farmers sell their tomatoes directly to the factory, solving a huge problem. What happens when farmers have a bumper crop, but no buyers? Before, they were left to watch their produce spoil at local markets. Now, they have a guaranteed buyer in Sofato and the factory, providing them with a consistent source of income. The company has already opened purchasing counters for the test phase, and the feedback from local farmers has been overwhelmingly positive. These kiosks not only ensure that farmers have a place to sell their produce, but also contribute to the development of the tomato industry in Burkina Faso. Can you imagine what this means for local farmers who have struggled for years to find reliable buyers? Fast forward to today, and the factory is officially complete. The test run has been successfully conducted and all systems are ready to go. The only thing left is for President Ibrahim Traoré to commission the factory. And you can bet that event will be a historic moment for the nation. Could this be the beginning of a new era for Burkina Faso? We believe so. And here's where you, our Izizi Africa viewers, come in. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications because we will be covering the factory's official commissioning ceremony in our next video. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. This tomato factory is part of a much larger vision that President Traor has for Burkina Faso and the entire Sahel region. He's committed to building an independent, self-reliant economy that no longer depends on former colonial powers like France. This factory is just one piece of a bigger puzzle. Traor is also working on several other developmental projects, including roads, schools, and health centers, all under his endogenous development model, which focuses on using local resources for national growth. In addition, the factory's impact will go far beyond Burkina Faso's borders. It will help bolster regional trade with neighboring countries like Niger and Mali, both of which are part of the Alliance of Sahel States, AES. The AES is an economic and political bloc that seeks to distance itself from French neocolonial influence and projects like this tomato factory are crucial to that mission. Do you think more African nations should follow Burkina Faso's example and take control of their resources? Let us know in the comments below. Tomato farming is a major agricultural activity in West Africa, with countries like Nigeria, Ghana, and Burkina Faso producing significant amounts of tomatoes each year. In 2021, Burkina Faso produced 290,000 tons of tomatoes, while Nigeria, the region's largest producer, yielded over 1.8 million metric tons annually. However, despite this abundance, West Africa still depends heavily on imported canned tomatoes, particularly from Italy. This paradox is driven by several factors, including inadequate processing facilities, poor storage infrastructure, and a lack of investment in local agro-industries. Several West African countries have attempted to establish tomato processing plants, to address the issue of wastage and reliance on imports. Nigeria, for instance, has the Dangote tomato processing plant in Kano, with a capacity of 1 in 200 tons per day. In Ghana, the Northern Star tomato factory has a capacity of about 500 tons per day. However, many of these factories face operational challenges, such as inconsistent tomato supply, poor maintenance, and insufficient government support, which have limited their impact. The region's dependence on imported canned tomatoes, particularly from Italy, can be traced to the superior packaging, longer shelf life, and consistent quality of imported products. Italy is one of the world's largest exporters of tomato products, and its exports to Africa have grown due to the inadequacies of local processing industries. Sofato, a new player in Burkina Faso, is seen as a game changer. With a processing capacity of 5 tons per hour, Sofato is poised to reduce wastage and reliance on imports by purchasing tomatoes directly from local farmers and processing them into tomato paste. The company has already opened purchasing counters for the test phase, and the feedback from local farmers has been overwhelmingly positive. These kiosks not only ensure that farmers have a place to sell their produce, but also contribute to the development of the tomato industry in Burkina Faso. Can you imagine what this means for local farmers who have struggled for years to find reliable buyers? Fast forward to today, 
and the factory is officially complete. The test run has been successfully conducted and all systems are ready to go. The only thing left is for President Ibrahim Traore to commission the factory, and you can bet that event will be a historic moment for the nation. Could this be the beginning of a new era for Burkina Faso? We believe so. And here's where you, our Izizi Africa viewers, come in. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications because we will be covering the factory's official commissioning ceremony in our next video. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. This tomato factory is part of a much larger vision that President Traore has for Burkina Faso and the entire Sahel region. He's committed to building an independent, self-reliant economy that no longer depends on former colonial powers like France. This factory is just one piece of a bigger puzzle. Traore is also working on several other developmental projects, including roads, schools, and health centers, all under his endogenous development model, which focuses on using local resources for national growth. In addition, the factory's impact will go far beyond Burkina Faso's borders. It will help bolster regional trade with neighboring countries like Niger and Mali, both of which are part of the Alliance of Sahel States, AES. The AES is an economic and political bloc that seeks to distance itself from French neo-colonial influence, and projects like this tomato factory are crucial to that mission. Do you think more African nations should follow Burkina Faso's example and take control of their resources? Let us know in the comments below. Tomato farming is a major agricultural activity in West Africa, with countries like Nigeria, Ghana, and Burkina Faso producing significant amounts of tomatoes each year. In 2021, Burkina Faso produced 290,000 tons of tomatoes, while Nigeria, the region's largest producer, yielded over 1.8 million metric tons annually. However, despite this abundance, West Africa still depends heavily on imported canned tomatoes, particularly from Italy. This paradox is driven by several factors, including inadequate processing facilities, poor storage infrastructure, and a lack of investment in local agro-industries. Several West African countries have attempted to establish tomato processing plants to address the issue of wastage and reliance on imports. Nigeria, for instance, has the Dangote tomato processing plant in Kano, with a capacity of 1-200 tons per day. In Ghana, the Northern Star Tomato Factory has a capacity of about 500 tons per day. However, many of these factories face operational challenges such as inconsistent tomato supply, poor maintenance, and insufficient government support, which have limited their impact. The region's dependence on imported canned tomatoes, particularly from Italy, can be traced to the superior packaging, longer shelf life, and consistent quality of imported products. Italy is one of the world's largest exporters of tomato products, and its exports to Africa have grown due to the inadequacies of local processing industries. Sofado a new player in Burkina Faso, is seen as a game-changer. With a processing capacity of 5 tons per hour, Sofado is poised to reduce wastage and reliance on imports by purchasing tomatoes directly from local farmers and processing them into tomato paste. This initiative will not only create jobs but also boost local agriculture and help Burkina Faso achieve food self-sufficiency. It's worth mentioning that while Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger are forging ahead with their plans for economic sovereignty, other West African nations are still grappling with colonial legacies like the CFA franc. This currency, controlled by France, has long been a symbol of economic exploitation. It's printed in France, and a large portion of West African countries' foreign reserves are held in the French treasury. Many believe the CFA franc is one of the last tools France uses to maintain control over its former colonies. But President Traor has hinted at moving away from the CFA franc altogether, a bold move that could further liberate Burkina Faso's economy. What do you think? Should Burkina Faso and other African nations ditch the CFA franc once and for all? Let's take a moment to appreciate the technical side of things. The factory covers over three hectares, and was constructed using state-of-the-art technology. The processing plant operates on what's called a nucleus estate contract farming model. In simple terms, the factory sources 55% of its tomatoes from its own farm, and the remaining 45% from local smallholder farmers. 
This model ensures a steady supply of high-quality tomatoes while also empowering local farmers. The plant is equipped with machinery capable of processing five tons of tomatoes per hour. That's a lot of tomatoes. And the best part? This facility will produce tomato paste that can be used domestically and for export. In the long run, this will help stabilize food prices, increase food security, and create more jobs across the value chain. The impact of this tomato factory extends far beyond just the agricultural sector. It will stimulate the creation of community businesses in agriculture and other sectors, boosting overall economic activity, not just in Burkina Faso, but in neighboring countries as well. By supporting smallholder farmers and providing them with a reliable market, the factory fosters sustainable development and encourages entrepreneurship. What kind of ripple effect do you think this will have on the community? In addition, the tomato factory is part of a larger strategy to diversify Burkina Faso's economy. President Traore has also launched a gold refinery, which is expected to refine up to 400 kilograms of gold daily, further boosting the country's revenue and reducing dependency on raw material exports. These initiatives all point toward one goal, building a self-reliant, prosperous Burkina Faso. So there you have it. President Ibrahim Traore has delivered big with the completion of this massive tomato processing factory. This is not just a win for Burkina Faso, but for the entire region. It represents a shift towards economic independence, self-reliance, and community empowerment. With the test run complete and the commissioning ceremony just around the corner, we can confidently say that Burkina Faso is on the path to greatness. What do you think? Could this factory be the start of something even bigger for the country and the region? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can stay updated on all the latest developments. You won't want to miss our next video, where we'll cover the factory's grand opening. Until then, stay tuned, stay informed, and keep supporting leaders who are making a real difference for Africa. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and letting me break down these complex geopolitical topics. Let me know what you think about the issues down in the comments below. Looking forward to that discussion. Please like this video, share it, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in our next video.